Wine is fascinating. This year's season will be captured by the grapes growing in the vineyard. The wine that is pressed in autumn will reflect today's weather, viticulture and winemaking techniques. In the year 2124, someone might open a bottle that was produced this year and will go, damn, this is delicious. Today I want to feel that feeling and share it with you as I'm going to open three bottles by the same producer from the same region. The main difference, one is less than 10 years old, one is more than 50 years old and one is more than 100 years old. 110 to be precise. So let's travel back in time through the decades and centuries. The wines for this tasting were sold to me by Paul, a subscriber who had collected these bottles and wanted me to taste them in a video. And I thought it was a great idea. Marcus de Rescal is a well-known brand and it has been around for a long time. I've actually tasted their wines many times and I've tasted this wine from the previous vintage in my first viral video here on YouTube. During the time of the Spanish Civil Wars, the founder of Marques de Riscal lived in Bordeaux and when he came back, he brought back quite a lot of winemaking know-how. He also brought back one of the most well-known winemakers, Jean Pinot. He later became his cellar master. Marques de Riscal was founded in 1858, producing their first bottles in 1862. And today they claim that those were the first bottled Rioja wines. Fluxra hit Europe at the end of the 19th century and in the beginning that was actually good for Rioja because the French wine industry was in shambles and there was ongoing demand that Rioja was able to fill and they quickly became the most famous wine region in Spain. Today 91% of Rioja's vineyards are dedicated to red grape varieties and 88% of those are Tempranillo. In 1925 Rioja became the first DO of Spain so after this bottle was produced and in 1991 it became the first DOCA so after this wine was produced. I find it striking that those three bottles even though there's more than 100 years between them look fairly similar. The main difference is that this one is labeled Reserva while those ones aren't. In order to qualify for Reserva status a wine has to be aged for at least 36 months in oak barrels and bottle and 12 months of those 36 months have to be spent in barrel. I couldn't find out when the Reserva status was implemented in law. I think it could have been in the 1970s but I don't know for sure. So those two wines might have been produced before Reserva as a term even existed. Even the good people from Marques de Riscal didn't know too much about those two wines so we'll have to guess but I'm guessing that they were made in a fairly similar way to what they are still doing today. Traditionalism of the winery manifests itself in the packaging. I mean those three bottles look oddly similar. There are slight differences when it comes to the labels. The capsule here is obviously very different but all of them have this cage around the bottle. The bottle shape is very much the same. I mean you can definitely recognize that this bottle is Marques de Riscal even if you only know this wine. The bottle from the 1970 vintage is actually in very good shape. It looks pretty good. I mean the level is slightly low but apart from that it's it's pristine. The 1914 is also in good condition I would say but the level is in the shoulder so it's down here now which isn't necessarily a great sign. A low level like that is however pretty typical so let's open them up. So let's start off with the most recent bottling the 2017 Marques de Riscal Rioja Reserva. 2017 is not that long ago but it was a pretty busy year. It was the year when Donald Trump was inaugurated as President of the United States. It was the year of the Me Too movement and it was the year when the Catalan independence referendum was held that put Spain into a bit of a political crisis. The vintage isn't rated very highly. Decanter rated it 87 while Robert Parker rated it 93. Jancis Robinson called it inconsistent because there was quite a bit of frost and drought. I don't know whether that is done on purpose or not but interestingly the cork is actually in the bottle the wrong way around. So the vintage here printed on the cork is on its head but Maybe that's a thing Marques de Riscal always does. We'll, we'll find out. So this is probably the easiest cork to pull out in this tasting. And I just saw that the vintage is actually printed in two ways on the cork. So, so 
yeah. Maybe, maybe that's what it's supposed to be like. The winery sent me some information on this wine. It's 96% Tempranillo, 4% Graciano. And the vines for this wine were actually planted in the 1970s. So after the next wine was actually harvested. And the wine is aged for 24 months in American oak. American oak is the preferred type of oak in Rioja. It gives the wine this vanilla and coconut flavor. And it's also way cheaper as those wineries need lots of barrels and are not really able to sell the wine at a very high price. It wouldn't be possible for most of them otherwise. The long aging in oak barrels makes those wines more age worthy. So the wine is exposed to small amounts of oxygen while being aged in the barrel. And that means that it can also age for longer in the bottle. It makes the wine more robust and this should come in handy if you want to taste a wine that is more than 100 years old. I mean, taste and enjoy. So the wine is dark ruby in color. I mean, it's really dark at its core. Towards the rim, it's a little bit brown, a little garnet, showing some maturation, some aging. On the nose, this is very typical for Rioja, very bright cherry flavors, a little bit of spice, a little bit of vanilla flavor coming through as well. It's quite intense and elegant and yeah it's it's pretty good on the pad it's still chewy and grippy so the tannins are present there's good acidity there as well good freshness but also quite a lot of body and concentration so it feels very complete but still actually pretty young i mean this is a delicious wine in europe it retails for around about 20 euros and it's probably somewhere between 20 and 30 us dollars and at that price point this offers a lot of quality it's quite delicious it's a distinct style from a classic region and it's it's yummy so i'm going to rate this 90 points i think it's delicious could be a little bit more integrated a little rounder a little bit rough towards the end but yeah i'm, I'm not complaining this is this is good so let's move on to the second wine the 1970 marques de riscal rioja like I said, it doesn't say Reserva on it. I'm just guessing that it's probably made in a similar way as today's Reserva. But, well, there's there's nothing on there. There are lots of medals on there, but, but that's it. So I learned that this golden cage, the so-called Mala, is put around the bottles in order to prevent fraud. So first of all, it makes it more difficult to counterfeit the bottle, as you also have to add this uh, golden cage to the bottle. And secondly, it's supposed to tightly fit over the capsule, therefore making it easy to kind of take wine out, put the cork back in. But yeah, I, I think today it doesn't really serve that purpose anymore. I think if you want to fake a wine, you can easily fake the golden cage as well. It's tradition. And that's kind of what we love about wine, isn't it? Tradition. So for this wine, I'm going to cut off the whole capsule in order to be able to see the cork properly. I won't decant this wine. I usually don't decant wines that are this old just because I want to make sure that I don't overexpose it to oxygen. I allow it to develop in bottle or maybe if I think it definitely needs decanting, I will decant it later on. But for now, I'm just going to open it and drink straight from the bottle or taste straight from the bottle. So as you can see here, there's, well, it's quite a bit of stuff going on here, but the, the capsule is actually in fine condition. There's a little bit of mold here on the top, which isn't an issue. I mean, you should clean off the top a little bit in order to make sure that it doesn't get into your glass, but it's not going to ruin the enjoyment, for me at least. I have a bit of an issue here. I actually only have my corkscrew here. I don't have my Durand, which is a, another great tool for opening bottles. So I'll have to make do with this and this might get me into trouble. As bottles age, the corks slowly deteriorate. I mean, corks are just a natural product. They are made from the bark of cork trees. And over time, they just kind of become softer and softer and at some point just fall apart. I'm just hoping that I get this cork out of the bottle in one piece. It seems to be moving, but it's falling apart on the top already. So I gotta be careful. I mean, check this out. It's coming out slowly, slowly, but 
Yeah, I have to be careful. You can do it, Constantine. You can do it. It's breaking. I don't want to break it. I'm already so scared about pulling out the other cork. If this is such a mess, then, well, just wait and see. Okay, now it's actually breaking apart. There's not that much I can do. The cork is already coming out at the bottom, so let's just see whether I can get the pieces out. Okay, this is not a pretty sight. This is not a pretty sight. But, I mean, it's not because I don't have any practice, you know, so... It's the fault of the cork. Let's just blame the cork. Look at that. I mean, it's just kind of... <laughs> nah. Honestly, why do I only have one Durand and why is it not here right now? Anyways. <laughs> oh my God. This is a massacre. I did it. I mean, there's nothing to be proud of if you could see this. But at least I got it all out, I think. There's no cork swimming in there. Let's see. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is different. I mean, this is actually kind of garnet, amber in color. So it's slightly brown, a little bit reddish. Mahogany, mahogany, mo ma mo mahogany, mahogany. So it smells old, but it doesn't smell very old or oh, it doesn't smell too old i mean it's more than 50 years old so it's an old wine that's for sure but it's actually still holding it together flavor wise it's more pinot-esque i would say so it smells of strawberries raspberries there is a little touch of vanilla still there so, so a little bit of oak flavor making me guess that they used American oak back then already. But remember, this is 54 years old, so it's really old and it's still keeping it together. Obviously, the vintage was quite a good vintage. 1970 was rated as very good to outstanding by different publications. So that obviously also helps, but it's always also the influence of the winery. On the palate, there's still tannins, there's acid, there's a decent structure, but it definitely, it, it is definitely falling apart a little bit. I mean, it's not it's not great anymore. It definitely feels like it's past its peak. I mean, wines generally in their development, good wines at least, go up and up and up in quality over the years. And then at some point, it just changes direction. It just becomes worse. And then it goes down quite rapidly. I'm pretty sure that this is past its peak. But yeah, this is an old wine. I mean, 1970 was the year when Apollo 13 was supposed to go to the moon, but didn't because one of the oxygen tanks exploded. It had to turn around and go back to Earth and it barely made it. So, well, I, I guess you've seen the movie. Anyways, this was the same year, the same year this wine was made. And yeah, I, I guess it's even possible to identify this as Rioja still. But here we go. The last wine of the tasting, the 1914 Marques de Riscal. 1914 was obviously the start of the First World War. Spain wasn't involved in that, so this didn't impact the production of this wine. Probably it did in a way, but, but it didn't impact it heavily at least. I don't really know what the vintage was like in Spain, in Rioja in particular. I only found some notes in the Bordeaux Vintage Guide by Neil Martin on the 1914 vintage in Bordeaux. But he's, he writes on paper 1914 is a great vintage. But he also says that the war might have impacted winemaking quality. Anyways, let's, let's find out whether this was a great vintage. 1914 wasn't all bad news. It was also the year when the Panama Canal was opened, connecting the Pacific to the Atlantic. So yeah, there was reason to celebrate, at least at that point. So interestingly, this cage is different. It almost looks like it's handmade. It certainly isn't golden, or at least it isn't golden anymore. And it it really has become a part of the of the bottle. So this type of capsule is interesting. I've never seen that before. It looks like the capsule is made of paper. Maybe it's just around another capsule. We'll find out. It's a bit like opening a 100 year old Christmas present. I actually don't want to destroy all of the paper. So I'm just going to take off the top. It looks like the paper capsule is just covering 
the same kind of capsule that the other bottles have, like a silver silver capsule, probably made from that. This table looks messy. Okay, I'm really worried now. I, I don't think I'll get the cork out, but let's see. So I actually received this bottle a week ago and I let it sit on a table for a while so that the deposit is settling at the bottom of the, the bottle. So I'm guessing there's some deposit at least. There's not necessarily a lot in there because the wine was aged for a long time in barrel, but there will be some deposit. So this should now be at the bottom of the bottle unless I stir it up. All right, I'm going in. Weirdly, it actually feels less soft, the cork. The cork actually feels fairly solid. I mean, this is 110 years old. So the, the cork probably is roughly that, that old. And still, it's still okay. Now it's coming out. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be very careful. I mean, it doesn't look great, but it, it could be worse. That's for sure. This is always the dangerous moment when it comes out of the bottle. It kind of starts to expand a little bit and then it kind of loses its form and structure and well, it might fall apart. Let's, let's see. Man, this is too much for my nerves. Okay. It's not good. It's not good. Okay. I'm feeling some responsibility here. This is a 110 year old bottle that was handed on over generations. And I'm messing it up. I, I have no, no other words. I'm messing it up. How much cork is in there? I, I don't know. It feels like I pulled out two corks already. Okay. Now I just want to get it over with, honestly. Okay. I didn't succeed. Some of the cork is in the bottle, but what you're going to do? All right. So this is brown. I mean, it's, it's not mahogany. It's kind of brown and, and cloudy. All right. Instead of showing like fresh fruit flavor, um, cherries and all the, that good stuff, this is just showing some dried fruit character, a little bit of spice, cinnamon. Um, it is, I mean, it doesn't smell terrible, but it doesn't smell good. It smells like a tawny pot, but not like a good one. And I'm guessing that this doesn't have like the sweetness and juiciness on the palate. This will probably be quite harsh on the palate. So over the years, the oxygen that was in the bottle or got into the bottle through the cork kind of reacted with the wine, turning it slightly brown, changing its aromatic composition, but also um, changing changing its, its structure on the palate. So the tannins here will probably be quite soft and round. The acidity might be a little bit higher because there might be a little bit of, um, yeah, a little bit of vinegary notes uh, that have developed in that bottle. It doesn't sound great, I know, but, but it's still very interesting. On the pad, it's actually quite interesting. I mean, it does taste like a tawny port, like a dry one. The tannins are really round and ripe, but this is not, not that bad. I think Apart from the little cork pieces that are swimming around in the glass, which don't really enhance the experience, this is certainly interesting. I actually find it fascinating thinking about the people who put this wine into bottle probably during World War I, kind of making this wine experiencing a totally different world to what we're experiencing today, using different methods more traditional methods, but making something that is actually fairly similar to what they made a few years ago. I mean, it's really interesting looking at those wines next to each other. The 1914 is just kind of, it looks almost like a, like coffee, like a dirty coffee. And this actually looks, looks quite nice. But to be honest, in terms of enjoyment and, and like, yeah, in terms of what would I drink tonight, the 2017 is definitely the wine that is still the most interesting, which goes to show that it's not always the most aged wine that is the most interesting or the most enjoyable. Oftentimes the wines that are past their peak are just interesting, while the wines that still have the peak in front of them are much more enjoyable. So as a general rule, you can definitely say that it's better to drink a wine when it's too young than drinking it when it's too old. But the best is when you drink it when it's just right. Fascinating stuff. This bottle is definitely going into my museum and I wanna say thank you to Paul for suggesting this. 
and thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what do you think about Rioja? Do you like them old? Do you like them young? Let me know down below. I hope I see you guys again very soon. Until then, stay thirsty.